Today I'm going to show you all the things that can help suppress your appetite. And this is backed up by science. You ever wonder how some people can just go through the entire day and be in front of food and totally resist it. Yet other people think about certain things they shouldn't be eating. Sometimes they might think that this is a lack of willpower or they're just a professional procrastinator. That is absolutely not true. What they're really lacking is the knowledge I'm going to share with you today. At the end of this presentation, you're going to be a lot more in control of what to eat or what to do to suppress your appetite, which directly increases your control over food. So you can lose weight, look good, feel good about yourself, and have a good willpower. Hunger and appetite don't start with your stomach. Sometimes it starts with your microbes, your gut bacteria that manipulate your brain. There's some wild and bizarre information how gut microbes can actually cause you to eat the wrong thing. Today, I'm going to help you defeat these temptations, sugar, refined carbs, foods with MSG, monosodium glutamate, alcohol, ultra processed foods, AKA junk foods. Let's go through these foods starting with coffee. Coffee stimulates something that actually helps you feel like you're full. Decaf coffee can do the exact same thing. Just make sure you do an organic decaf coffee if you're going to do that. Avocado was a really good thing to satisfy you, not just because it's fatty, but there are certain natural chemicals in avocado to help satisfy you, reduce hunger. I know with me, uh, when I consume guacamole, it really fills me up really fast. Plus, it has certain fiber that can feed your bacteria. And fiber in anything slows down the spike of blood sugars. It will prevent you from having a low blood sugar situation, which will increase appetite. Dark chocolate. There's a certain chemical that's very bitter that suppresses appetite. You realize when they go up with the percentage, it's actually going to be less and less sugar. So if you can find something like 95% or even 90%, you're going to be good to go because the amount of sugar in there is very, very tiny. And there's a lot of magnesium in chocolate as well. Cayenne pepper is another thing you should be adding to your food. In certain studies, just the smell of it alone will decrease hunger, which is pretty wild. Apple cider vinegar is the next one on the list. If you add that tablespoon in a glass of water, it's gonna help stabilize your blood sugar. Even if you actually raise your blood sugar, apple cider vinegar will help stabilize them so your blood sugar will not come down too low. One of the reasons why this works is your body can actually use the acid in apple cider vinegar as fuel. There's a certain chemical in green tea, EGCG, super effective of suppressing appetite. Bone broth is the next thing on the list. Drinking bone broth actually creates a very similar effect to being satisfied after eating something more savory, like meat. It has a lot of nutrients. You should try that sometime and you'll see. Next one is just a protein rich meal, like eggs or even red meat. Because out of all the things you can eat, like carbs, fats, especially if you have a high quality protein like eggs or red meat, because not only are there high quality amino acids, but you have a lot of other nutrition in the meat that can satisfy your brain and give your body what it really needs when it's hungry. The next one on the list is adding ginger to your foods. It has the ability to stimulate digestive juices, which allow you to extract more nutrients from the food that you eat. Next one is dark leafy green vegetables or lettuce. And then the olive oil is a fat that's very satisfying, but it will also help extract some of the fat soluble nutrients from those greens, which are certain nutrients that go beyond just vitamins and minerals. Next one on the list is MCT oil. You can get these from coconuts, but MCT oil is a certain type of fat that does not involve all the different chemical reactions like other types of fats, easily to digest, and it, a lot of it turns into ketones, which will give you more energy than carbs or even protein, because the body likes to consume ketones as its fuel. Adding turmeric to your foods create a lot of positive things. One being just feeling more satisfied. Next thing on the list is zinc. If someone's deficient in zinc, they're going to be excessively hungry. Next one is something called kombucha tea, which is not really a tea. It's like a carbonated drink. It's very acidic. I like it. You just need to drink a half a glass and sip it. I like to dilute it with water but it's very, very satisfying because it's filled with something called lactic acid that helps feed your gut, which will then send signals up to your brain that you're full. Grapefruit also has a certain chemical that can be very satisfying. Also, there's another chemical that's bitter in arugula that supports the liver that seems to be more satisfying than having regular like salad, like romaine, lettuce, or something like that. Also realize when you consume vegetables with fiber or 
berries with fiber, that fiber can buffer the blood sugars. Anytime you have a meal with fiber, you're gonna be more satisfied. The next thing on the list is full fat protein. You don't wanna do lean protein. The leaner the protein, as in like whey protein powder, the more insulin that's gonna be raised. So there's something called the insulin index. And at the top of the list, you have the highest thing that stimulates insulin as far as not being a carbohydrate, and that is whey protein. As you come down and have more fat with the protein, like a whole egg or more fat of your meat or fat of your fish, you have a lower insulin spike. You're not gonna have the dip in blood sugar because insulin pushes your blood sugar down. We want to keep your blood sugar level. Eating more fat with the protein can help buffer that response. Eating more fiber also helps buffer the glycemic index as well. Another thing that can really help your appetite is exercise. Now, here's the thing. If you are exercising too much, like high intensity exercise, that could actually drop your blood sugar too low and you can be hungry. What I'm talking about is long walks, something that's not too intense, that can greatly help your blood sugar. The next thing on the list, and this is really important, is getting an extra 30 minutes of sleep, whether you take a nap for 30 minutes or you sleep in 30 minutes later. That extra sleep greatly reduces cortisol and levels off your blood sugar. This leads me to the next thing, which is just keeping your stress level as low as possible. And to do that, you wanna do exercise, physical work around the house, sleep more, eat healthy, do stretching, and take ashwagandha and definitely magnesium glycinate before you go to bed. That can greatly help. If you combine some of these foods with better sleep, less stress, you can control your appetite, lose weight, look good, and feel better about yourself. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress, and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special, if you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.